Hello, welcome to worship. I'd invite you to, together with me, recite the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling place among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Almighty and ever-living God, you revealed the incarnation of your Son by the brilliant shining of a star. Shine the light of your justice always in our hearts and over all lands, and accept our lives as the treasure we offer in your praise and for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission here is to seek God and serve others. Happy New Year! I think we are all hoping and praying for a good new year filled with health and with well-being. And as you begin to make your New Year's resolutions, let me encourage you to add seeking God and serving others to yours. Beginning in January, there's two Bible studies offered in the evening. This coming Wednesday night, January 6th, is Jesus Outside the Lines, where we will discuss things that divide us and finding truth and beauty in conflict. And on Tuesday evenings, beginning January 12th, you can discover the Old Testament in seven sentences. I know, it's pretty amazing. Please look online for different times for these, materials maybe, and also to RSVP. You can do that at aplc.org. And while you're there, there's also the opportunity to serve others with our blood drive on January 31st. Donations for this much-needed life-saving resource are made by appointment only, but lucky for you, you can sign up for the Bible study and make your appointment to donate blood online today at aplc.org. And who knows, you may even complete your New Year's resolutions before the month is even out. But now let us turn our attention to the hearing of God's Word. The first reading is a reading from Isaiah chapter 60, beginning at verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you and the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. With your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every shall flower in his days, and profound peace to the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the The 
kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord and The second reading is a reading from Ephesians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, for surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purposes that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. Word of God. Word of life. Be God. Hey, everybody. I wonder if you all have a nativity scene in your home, like a koresh, a nativity scene or a koresh. Because we do at our house, and it's made out of porcelain, and it was a special gift that was given to me by a good friend a long time ago. And whenever I came to Abiding Presence, another friend gave me a nativity scene, and I want to share it with you today, and I've never seen one like it before. A nativity scene shows all the different aspects of the Christmas story, and in my nativity scene, it was made with little rubber duckies. And here is little rubber ducky Mary and little rubber ducky Joseph. And of course, they have to be in the nativity scene because they bring into the world little baby ducky Jesus here. And so we have the, the three of them and, and we all celebrate them. But something else is going on in the story, you know, after the, after the mommy and daddy duck are there. And then all of a sudden there's an angel, this angel ducky appears and starts giving a message to the shepherd duckies that are out there and they're watching their flock flock or the little sheep duckies and and they're watching their flock and they listen and then all of a sudden the shepherd has to go and he runs with haste to go see Mary and the baby and 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 goes to visit them and talk with them but there's still some people that are missing out of my nativity scene and uh, that's who we're going to be talking about today because these are the magi and these are my three magi little duckies and each of them come bearing gifts to see the baby 
Jesus. One is bringing gold, another one is bringing frankincense, and another one is bringing myrrh. And we're going to be talking about the Magi today as they come to visit Jesus. And so if you have a nativity scene at home, I'd love for you to go and take a look at it and see if you can figure out who all the different people are in it. The shepherd, Mary, Joseph, the baby, the angel, maybe even one of these three little duckies. Let's all now sing the gospel acclamation. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. And then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so I may also go and pay him homage. And when they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Over a week ago, something amazing happened. In the southwest, Jupiter and Saturn could be seen getting closer. And then on December 21st, they appeared together as one. And while we in northeast San Antonio could not see this great conjunction because of a cloudy night, there were pictures like all online, all across America, and they were showing it. And it only lasted for a few hours. And it's so cool because this hasn't happened for like 400 years. But the people back in 1623 when that happened wouldn't have been able to see it either because it was too close to the sun. So you have to go back 800 years to where it was visible. And I'm sure that those that saw it were thinking probably the same thing that I was. Am I looking at the star that led the Magi to the infant child. Now, your local astrophysicist would say no, uh, uh, because it's probably a comet that the wise ones followed. But I don't know. I, I think in this most auspicious year where we have experienced as a community and the world quite a bit of darkness, that, that these planets would align, creating a bright light in the sky, the days leading up to Christmas, and we'd call it the Star of Bethlehem. So regardless if it's the same thing or not, I felt a connection to those travelers from the east, following a star to the source of light and life of all people. Let us pray. Gracious God, as your light shines forth, be with us as we follow. May it burn deep within each of us so your glory may be known to all. Take the gifts that we bring. Grant us guidance on this journey and let our actions touch the world. 
This we pray in the name of your Son. Amen. So today we're celebrating Epiphany, which means manifestation or sudden illumination or, or insight, revelation. Matthew gives us the Magi, these astrologers, and they are on this divine mission. And we get to sing about the star of wonder with beauty bright, guiding us to that perfect light. And if you are a nativity purist, you can now bring out your magi to your Koresh nativity scene before you pack it up the next day. Epiphany marks the completion of our 12-day journey of Christmas because what began with light shining in the darkness has become a light guiding outsiders to Emmanuel, illuminating the light that shines within each of us for all the world to see. And, and I used to think that this manifestation of light, this sudden illumination, was like a, a, a blinding event. Like when you're in a dark room and somebody all of a sudden just flips the light switch on or, or when somebody whips back the curtain and you're in a dark room and the, noon, and, and the noonday sun just starts beaming in. It's, it's alarming and it takes your eyes a minute to kind of adjust. But the more that I let this story interpret me and the more that I experience the darkness that's around us even today, I think this... Light is probably more like, like a gentle sunrise where the colors just dance and they, and they blend from one another as it overtakes all those dark hues and the brightness slowly warms and, and, and wakes the soul. And the sun, as the sun makes its debut on the world, there's not a single place that the light doesn't touch. See, the prophet Isaiah writes, Arise, Shine, for your light has come. Risen before you, the glory of this light will dispel the darkness. And then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. And then Matthew talks about these wise ones that are following the light of a star. It's as if the star is moving them. From Herod and his darkness to Bethlehem, where this light finally rests. And they take a knee at the infant king of the Jews. They are in the presence of the divine, the holy. And they give these lavish gifts, gifts that are set apart for a king, the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. And then they're warmed, warned in a dream to take a back road home to avoid Herod. The Magi didn't immediately go to Jesus. They, they questioned and they pondered and they, and they sought. And then they followed and traveled and, and realized. These outsiders, these Gentiles, these others, they touched the manifestation of God. And God touched them. And their hearts were filled with joy. Like many of you, we've been spending a lot of time at home lately. And of course, every streaming service that's out there has like a multitude of Christmas movies. And if you have an 11-year-old at home, then you may have watched some of the same movies that we did. Uh, like Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Now, now give me a minute. It's going to make sense. If you, give me a minute, okay? Uh, there's this scene where Kevin is with this homeless woman, um, and I, I guess the best way to describe her is a pigeon lady. Um, but they're sitting in the attic of a concert hall. And Kevin is really wrestling and wondering what the next thing he's supposed to do because he's alone in New York, threatened by the same two criminals that were with them at home alone. Anyway, she tells him this. Think about the most important thing you can do for others and then go and do it. Just follow the star of your own heart. And as I was watching this, I thought for a minute about two things. The first was the mission of abiding presence, seeking God and serving others. And the second was today's gospel lesson. See, these astrologers knew the importance of this star, that it would guide them to the king of the Jews, not, not a king of their Eastern religion or practice, but, but something else. And it was important enough that they go and they present king-size gifts 
and bend, on bended knee. And then God speaks to them in this dream, protecting them from Herod, and they follow the star of their heart, leading them home to safety. As we enter into 2021, the struggles of this past year will not suddenly be over like somebody just flips a switch. It's going to take some time before any of us feels like things are anywhere near something normal. But we can, and we can let the, uh, uh, excuse me, it's going to take some time for us to realize when anything is normal, where we can arise and, and shine and be radiant, but we can do this. Because the light that shines gradually overtakes any darkness that's around, and it warms and it wakes the soul, and it can reach beyond our wildest imagination, and it can touch everything. God is calling us to follow this star as the light expands and grows, to seek God in our neighbors and our co-workers and our friends and our enemies, to, to serve others, thinking about the most important thing that we can do for them, and then to go and, and do it. Even in the darkness of quarantine, go, do it. We do not have to wait another 400 years to experience this brilliance. We have it today. We have it right now, and it shines in each and every one of us. So follow it. Follow the star that's in your own heart. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Glorious God, fill your church with joy. Let your faithful people live as beacons of your redemption. Give wisdom and courage to your church, that it may speak with boldness and confidence, even when words of mercy are met with scorn. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Show us your faithfulness in the rising and setting of the sun. Place wonder into the hearts of those who search the skies and explore the heavens. Curb waste and pollution, that all might have clean air to breathe. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring all nations and rulers to the splendor of your dawn. Raise up advocates who champion the cause of the exploited and vulnerable people. Inspire leaders to be generous with abundance that all people might live in stability and freedom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Come quickly with your healing power to all who seek love, support, and restoration. Dispel fears and shadows. Restore broken relationships and mend broken hearts. Bring relief to those who are sick or struggling, especially to those we name aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send traveling mercies upon all who journey home by other roads, guard refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers. Protect families being, fleeing conflict in their homelands or abuse in their homes. Tend to those who have no place to lay their heads. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to the boundless riches of Christ, you draw all to your saints, from the least to the greatest, to your heavenly places. As you created all things, make all things new again in the splendor of your glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please, wherever you're at right now, reach out to someone, maybe with a text or a phone call, but share God's peace amongst everyone. Lisa, peace be with you. Shelby, peace be with you. The Magi brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh to lay at the feet of Jesus. The gifts offered were given in praise to God as well as symbolic of the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. When we bring our gifts to the altar through the mail and online giving right now, we too praise God by providing ministries to help those in need. Thinking about the most important thing that we can do for others following the star of our heart. Thank you for your continued generosity.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you spoke to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, bless you this day through the Word made flesh. Amen. And now, go in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.